The Meta Ads platform, where you can target users on Facebook and Instagram, continues to take a very large share of paid media budgets for all of the clients that we run accounts for. Now, one of the things that we see is that typically accounts will end up kind of focusing on only one or two types of targeting. And there can be a couple reasons for that. The first, you come by pretty honestly. Maybe you've run some campaigns in the past, these are the ones that work best, so you just keep running with them. The other challenge is that sometimes people just flat out don't know what all types of targeting options are available on the platform. So whether you're just in a rut or you just haven't been aware, we wanted to put this video together to run you through all of the available targeting options for the Facebook and Instagram meta ads platform in 2023. This Pay Media Pros video is sponsored by Optio, the smarter, more efficient way to manage Google Ads. Optio's platform operates as a second pair of eyes on your accounts, regularly monitoring performance trends to make data-driven optimization suggestions for keyword strategies, bid optimizations, ad copy creation, and more. Better yet, you can save time by implementing their suggested changes directly in their user-friendly interface. Optio is extending their free trial period for Paid Media Pros viewers for 60 days, meaning you get two full months of testing and using Optio on your accounts before you pay a dime. If you're interested in giving it a shot, click the link on the screen right now or in the video description to get started. The easiest way for us to walk through all of the targeting options in Facebook ads is simply to create a brand new campaign from scratch and walk through each of the steps. So I'm just gonna come over here to create. Just so we don't have any errors, I'm gonna create a traffic campaign. If you're curious about any of the Facebook ads campaign objectives, you can check out the video at the top of the screen right now. We'll go ahead and click continue. And now we have a brand new traffic campaign. All the things you see on the screen right now are campaign settings. All targeting options in Facebook ads live at the ad set level. So I'm gonna skip everything on this page and I'm gonna navigate directly to the ad set. There are a handful of other settings that live at the ad set level, and we're gonna pretty much skip right over those. None of them directly tie to the targeting options at this point. So we're gonna scroll past the conversion, dynamic creative, right past budget and schedule. And now we are down into audience controls and a new advantage plus audience section. Over the course of this year, this has become the new setup when you create a new campaign in Facebook and it relies exclusively on this Advantage Plus audience section. This is quite a departure from the previous targeting options, and rather than talk about it in this video, we will be creating a new video in the coming weeks for you to get an overview of how Advantage Plus audiences work. For this video, to cover all of the targeting options, we're gonna choose this option down here, which is switch to original audience options. When we do that, Facebook does not love that. It wants to make sure that we know that we could get up to a 33% lower cost per result based on their experiment. That sounds fine. We're gonna use original audience. It scrolled us up a little bit, so I'm gonna come back down. If you're concerned about opting into original audience because you're gonna lose the opportunity to use the Advantage Plus audience, don't be too worried. Facebook leaves this big section up here that you can always switch back if you want to. But I know for this video, I don't want to. So I'm gonna click the X here. And now we've reverted back to the original type of audience targeting. And this is where we're gonna spend the bulk of our time for this video. Within the audience section, there are six different settings that we're gonna go through. And I'm gonna cover the most basic options first, and then we'll get into the slightly more advanced versions in just a minute. So we're gonna skip past custom audience and focus on the more basic options. First is gonna be location. So if you hover over it, you can see that there's a pencil here. The campaigns are automatically going to opt into the country that you are advertising from. So for me, that's the United States. But if I click this edit pencil, we now have the ability to change our location targeting. If I click into this field for search locations, you'll see that a big map comes up. And here is the section that I wanted to read because I'm not gonna go through and show each individual option. But you can type in specific countries, states and regions, cities, postal codes, addresses, DMAs, or congressional districts around the world to utilize for your Facebook targeting. That is a very wide range of flexible targeting options. So pretty much any specific location that you want to target, you can do that simply by searching for the locations here. But you will also notice that there's a drop pin option. So if I zoom in just a little bit, it doesn't really matter where I end up being. I click this drop pin, I can drop a pin right here. And now you can see that you can use radius targeting to try and find your audience on Facebook. You can extend it if you want to. So it's very customizable how you target different locations 
on the Meta platform. And yes, I'm gonna be using Meta and Facebook interchangeably because I'm more of an old school marketer and I call it Facebook, but I should be calling it Meta and getting with the times like all the cool kids are. So it's a pretty high level view of the location targeting on Facebook. There's lots of different options that we have there, but if you're interested in diving further into the location targeting options on Facebook, we do have a video that you can check out at the top of the screen right now. The next couple of targeting options we're gonna look at are pretty basic functionality around demographics. So the first is gonna be age. If I click the edit pencil, you can see that we can select an audience by individual year increments. So there's all the way down to 13, even though there is a minimum age set for this campaign, but you can target anywhere within this range all the way up to the 65 plus mark. Same thing for the other end. So whatever your target demographic is, you can narrow down the age range that you wanna have based on individual year increments. You can see down here that selecting an audience under 18 will limit your targeting options. So just make sure you know who you're gonna be able to target when you adjust your age to where you need it to be. Additionally, genders, pretty simple option here. We have all men or women, not super heavily inclusive depending on who you are, but there are some options here. The next simple type of targeting option is going to be based on language. You can see that Facebook will default you to all languages. So if we click edit, it basically tells you to just start searching for languages because there are so many options on the platform, it does not give you a list to choose from. Just pick a letter, type it in, and it'll show you all the different languages that start with that letter. So depending on who you're trying to target, what language you're trying to reach them in, you can customize your targeting based on how the user engages with the platform. But again, if you leave it blank, it's going to default to all languages. The last two types of targeting are going to be the more robust versions where there's a lot more information available. And the first that I'm gonna talk about is detailed targeting. Here you can see that we're gonna be focusing on demographics, interests, and behaviors. So if I click edit, it will open up the large range of targeting options that we have here. So this box here is where we wanna add demographics, interests, and behaviors. And you can choose to browse, which will open up a dropdown that has each of those different groups here. You can then choose different options for the dropdowns. So under demographics, let's say we wanna look at different parental status, all parents, and then parents in all groups, parents that have kids up to 12 months, all of these different options here with work. This is a pretty common one that we see. You can search for people's employers, you can search for their job titles, or you can choose which industry they're in simply by checking the box next to the different group that they're in. Now this section is pretty useful in my opinion. I think there's a lot you can do simply by checking into the interests, demographics, and behaviors of people. But one thing I will point out is that there's not an exhaustive list of options with each of these. The best example I can give is under behaviors and anniversary. There's lots of different things that you can lead up to for an anniversary, but the only one that's available on Facebook is there's an anniversary coming up within 61 to 90 days. Now, while this might be the prime time to buy a gift for somebody with an anniversary coming up, that's still a pretty specific range of 30 days that's available. So while I would encourage you to utilize the browse function to see what type of different digital activities you can have on here or anything else, I certainly want you to remember that this will not be an exhaustive list. For every account on Facebook, you can look at the suggestions, and this is going to be based on either other targeting options that you've used in your campaigns or different behaviors that Facebook has inferred from your other targeting options, which is why we have these blurred out so you can't see who our client is trying to target. But these can be a really useful cheat sheet to look at just by clicking suggestions and seeing what Facebook comes up with. But the best way that I've found to use this detailed targeting section is simply to start typing and see what comes up. Right now I'm charging my Apple Watch in front of me. So let's say I'm just trying to target people with anything that has to do with an Apple Watch. If I just type that in, you can see that under consumer electronics, there's Apple Watch and then there's Apple, all different sorts of options based on a phone, all that type of thing. So there's really only one option that we have here and that's gonna be based on people's interests. But what else? What about my Yeti mug? Same thing, just need to type that in. And unfortunately there's nothing here for my Yeti mug, but there are Yeti bicycles. There's a certain person who's an influencer that has Yeti in their name. And then there's other options that come up and I'm not really sure what that's about. If we type in a little bit more major brand, which I know has lots of different options, you can see that under Nike, there are employers, there's schools, which is interesting, people who have job titles at Nike, or people who are interested in Nike Inc. for footwear, people who work at Nike football, work at Nike sportswear, work at Nike skateboarding, they went to school at Nike football, 
There's lots of different options that will show up here that can help you really narrow down who you're trying to target simply by typing this in. Almost none of these options are in the browse function. As I mentioned, definitely start typing into that detailed targeting option and you'll be able to focus on the right people that way. Since we're in this section already, you'll notice this exclude button here. Basically, any of the people that you can target in this demographics targeting option, you can also exclude them based on that specific group. So if you notice that there are some people that you do want to target, but maybe one of the targeting options just isn't the right fit, you can exclude them in this section as well to make sure you're targeting the exact right people. The last little checkbox down here is going to be the Advantage Detailed Targeting Plus. And if you check the box here, that will help you reach people beyond your detailed targeting selections when it's likely to improve performance. Think of this as a machine learning expansion version of your targeting options that are in here. If Facebook notices a pattern in the people who are converting and they've identified a group of people that's just slightly outside of your detailed targeting that you have in here, checking this box allows them to serve ads to those users to try and get more conversions or whatever your campaign objective is. For now, I'm just gonna uncheck it. And that brings us to our last type of targeting, which was actually the first one on the list, but I think it's the more complex one. So I wanted to tackle it last. And that's gonna be custom audiences. Now you can create a new custom audience from here. And if I click this box, you'll see the two types of custom audiences. There's a custom audience, which are people who've already interacted with your business. And there's a lookalike audience, which is how you reach new people based on meta technologies who are similar to your most valuable audiences. So in this section, we're actually leveraging audiences that have been built elsewhere. And to show you where those are set up, we're actually gonna come over here to the main menu on the right, and we're gonna to go to the audiences page. And here's where we'll be able to create those custom and lookalike audiences. As you can see, this account has a handful of them already, and you can see the audience type just by looking in this column here. So to create a new audience, we'll just use this button, and let's start with a custom audience. I'm not gonna go through all of the different types of custom audiences you can make, but as a quick overview, you can create custom audiences of users who've already engaged with your business, either based on sources that you own, like your website, your app, a customer list where you upload different users, or you can create them based on meta sources, either based on videos that people have watched on the platform, lead generation forms they've interacted with, Instagram account interactions, on Facebook listings, all of these different options. Each one of these has their own different parameters that you can create a custom audience for, and we'll likely put together another video that covers each of these as well. But for now, just know that your custom audience can be created based on all of these different ways that users interact with your business or your products, either on your sources or on any of the Facebook or Meta sources. So if I X out of this, now let's talk about a lookalike audience. Lookalike audiences are going to be based on your custom audiences. So you need to first select a source for the audience. If I click into this field here, you can see the things are either based on value sources or others. And these can be based either on pages or custom audiences. So the custom audience options are useful in that they also lean into the machine learning of lookalike audiences as well. So let's say I just wanted to create one off of this leads list that we uploaded. You then get to choose the location, either a region or a country. And then you get to choose the size and number of lookalike audiences you wanna create. You can see down here, there's a slider scale from 0% all the way up to 10%. Lookalike audience size is going to be based in this percentage range, and it is always based on the population of the region or country that you had in this section. So I'm gonna choose the United States just so we'll have something to look at. And now down below, you can see that there's a 1% of this list, which is about 2.8 million people. If I wanted to create a larger lookalike audience, I could pull this toggle over here. And now I'm up to 5.5 million, which is double because I went from 1% to 2%. You can do this all the way up to 10%. We'll give you about 28 million people. But I personally like to keep my lookalike audiences relatively narrow. If you wanted to test a lot of different options, you can create more than one lookalike audience. Let's say we wanted to create three. And now I have these different ranges where it's 1% of the US, one to 2%, and two to 3% for three separate audiences. But you can pull these toggles over to make these audiences different sizes. So maybe you wanted to create one that is just a 1% and then a one to 5% and then five to 10%. You can then test all of the different performance of each of those 
and you can determine which percentage bracket is right for you because each of these is mutually exclusive. This first audience will not have any of the same users as the second, and the second will not have any of the same users as the third, so on and so forth. They will all be different people totaling up to the 27, 28 million people mark. Again, this is just a very quick overview of lookalike audiences, and we have it on the roadmap to put together a new video around lookalike audiences, strategies, tactics, all of that good stuff. So stay tuned for more on that. But for now, let's just hop back into the campaign builder, because now in this custom audience section, you know the two types of audiences that are in here. So if we click the box here, we'll be able to choose from any of the accounts lookalike audiences or any of the custom audiences, and we can make sure that we target those in this box, or each of those different targeting options is also eligible to be an exclusion. So same thing here, any of the existing lookalike or custom audiences can be excluded from your campaigns as well as included for targeting. So depending on how you have those audiences built, make sure you have the right ones that are being included. So let's say anybody who's been to your website before, but then you're also excluding the right people, maybe anybody who's already converted. So you're targeting only the people who have been to your site, but have not converted in the past, trying to get them to eventually convert on your conversion actions. As you can tell, there are quite a lot of ways that you can target users on the meta ads platform, whether it's based on audiences that you create, the detailed targeting options from the platform itself, or just any of the basic functionality around demographics or locations of where people live. So hopefully this rundown has given you some ideas about new ways to target users that maybe you forgot about, or maybe you just never knew about in the first place. Now you can start testing and seeing if you can get some incremental performance out of your Facebook and Instagram campaigns. If you have any additional questions about targeting options on Facebook or pretty much anything in the Facebook advertising ecosystem, we would love to hear about it in the comments below. Thanks for watching our video. We really appreciate it. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up below. If you really liked it, maybe think about subscribing to the Paid Media Pros YouTube channel and you'll get alerted every time a new video drops. If you really, really liked it, you can help support the channel by checking out some of the t-shirts that we're wearing on our merch shelf, as well as looking at the super thanks button.